Hey guys, uh, it's Van Riller here, and yeah, this is the New Jersey Transit North Jersey Coastline. It's just been released for Railworks Train Simulator 2016. It's been a long time coming. I know uh, people have been asking for this content for years now. Uh, I think the original Northeast Corridor Line for, uh, to Trenton, that came out about four years ago, um, New York to Philadelphia, and people have been asking for the New Jersey Transit content since then, so yeah, it's been a long time coming. So today, to show off the equipment, um, I've already installed some of my mods, so this is not what it's going to exactly be like if you're purchasing it directly from Steam, but it'll give you a close enough uh, close enough example of what you'll be getting when you download uh, this DLC. We'll be running a train NJCL train 3361 from New York Penn to Bayhead. That's the direct train, no transfers. So we'll be running with a dual mode. We'll be running with an ALP45. We will make the mode change from electric to diesel at Long Branch. Scheduled departure time for this train is 436, so why don't we head over into the locomotive. One of the issues that was uh, corrected in Penn Station, because they, they, I believe they did recycle the Penn Station from uh, the New York New Haven. You might recall that Penn Station has low-level platforms in that DLC, but the issue was brought up and they did correct the platform heights in the North Jersey Coastline version of Penn Station. So today we're going to be running with Unit 4512. Obviously, can't open the door, so we're just going to get into the cab. Ah, there we go. The one thing I want to note is that uh, by default they are setting the cab light on for all rolling stock because apparently there's an issue with the Xbox controller uh, that you can't turn on the cab light, so you can't toggle the cab light on or off with the Xbox controller. I mean, I, I don't know who the hell plays Train Simulator 2016 with an Xbox, but whatever. Anyways, so here we are in the cab. A uh, couple things. Why don't we turn on the headlights? Headlights. I can't tell if they're on or not. They toggle really fast. So, there we go. Alright, good. Um, turn on the gauge lights so I can see what I'm doing. Activating the ACT. The. Ugh. Activating the ATC and the ACSES. Cab signaling, control D for the ACES and the control F for the ATC. So we will have proper cab signaling now. Just a note, the cab signaling um, for the New Jersey Transit equipment that comes with the North Jersey Coastline is not compatible. It is not compatible with the cab signaling found in the New York New Haven route or the cab signaling that is found in the uh, the original Northeast Corridor route. But one thing that I like that they changed about that issue is that the cab signaling comes off. It, 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 it's set... Ugh, I don't know what I'm saying. It is set to default. It, the default setting is to be off when you load the train. Okay, there we go. That way you can run this equipment on the original Northeast Corridor or the New York New Haven route without any issues, with any cab signaling issues. Um, I know that was an issue with the ACS 64 and the, some of the Metro North equipment is that the cab signaling by default was on so that when you loaded that those trains onto other routes um, they would actually mess the cab signaling would prevent you from operating the train properly unless you actually knew how to turn it off 
So, so this is a good improvement. Why don't we do the brake test? There are some issues with the brake gauges, but for the most part, they function properly. The notches are coded in correctly. The only issue I have is that the electric hold position does not function properly. The brake, the brake pipe will not recharge if I move the handle into electric hold. But other than that, I have no issues with the brake. Um, I did send them suggestions on how the brake should be set up, so that plays a, a lot into it. Um, this unit does have blend air dynamic brakes, as will all the New Jersey Transit equipment that follows after this. Um, from the locomotive, you can select a dynamic brake notch uh, separate from from the blend air dynamic. So how the, the blend air dynamic works, let me just show you this, is, oh, you can't see from here. Anyway, so how the blend air dynamic works is that it is completely based off of the brake pipe pressure, so the white needle here. Um, <clears throat> so as I make a brake reduction, the brake pipe pressure drops, of course. Here, let me show you this. It's easier to see this way. Good. And I've ha they have it set. I sent them the suggestion, and they, they put it in. They have the, the dynamic brakes set so that when your brake pipe is at 110 PSI, dyna dynamic brakes are at zero. And as you make a reduction, the dynamic brakes, uh, the dynamic brakes <clears throat> increase based on how much of a reduction you make. And the setting is, the setting for 100% uh, dynamic brake is is 94 psi in the brake pipe. So that's a 16 pound reduction for maximum dynamic brake. Variability ranges between. Um, that 16 psi range as you can see as I'm modulating the brake pressure now so we're we're behind schedule obviously so let me let me open the doors and let the passengers on so there is let me turn the cab light back on for a second there is uh, there is there is an indicator here it shows you your your door status down here there are traction statuses so i think the wheel slip thing is here and sanding is here so if we do experience wheel slip you will see me turn the sander on and whatnot so why don't we get started oh we have uh, let's see so this is what the the map looks like uh you have the original northeast corridor it's been completely rebuilt it looks amazing uh it, it runs amazing too the track smoothness has been fixed. Um, the track configuration around Harrison and Hudson interlockings has been readjusted. The, the MMC is included. Hoboken is completely decked out. It's amazing. Um, so we're going to run all the way to Rahway, split off onto the coastline. Make it to Long Branch, uh, mode change at Long Branch, and then continue on to Bay Head. Bay Head. Yes. So why don't we get started? Crap, hold on. Center. There we go. Back. There we go. Alright, turn the cab light back off. Turn the bell on. One, one thing I want to show you is... is yes. It's cool, right? Works with the horn too, and the traction sounds. All right, this is uh, NJ Rail thirty three sixty one High Ball Penn Station.
so train 3361 is the Penn Station to Bayhead Express, no transfer. We will be making stops at Secaucus Junction, Newark Penn Station, and then expressing to Woodbridge. From Woodbridge, we will make all regular local stops. All regular local stops will be made from Woodbridge to Bayhead, aside from Monmouth Park. In addition, all stops from Woodbridge to Bayhead, with the exception of South Amboy? No, with the exception of Perth Amboy. All stops from Woodbridge to Bayhead, with the exception of Perth Amboy, will be permitted to depart ahead of schedule. Alright, so one thing you'll have noticed is that they did include the, the covering above. They did include the covering above the Penn Station interlocking. Uh, that's from the Brookfield thing. Uh, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, it's realistic, but... It's sort of sad, because now you can't, there's no sunlight, but whatever, it's not a big deal. So, just to recap, the sounds, the traction motor sounds, the horn sound, and, um, what else? The physics are not, they're modded. You're, you're seeing the modified version of the, of the horn sound, traction motor sounds, and physics for this locomotive. I've already installed them, so they're not going to be, uh, your copy should not sound like this or perform like this when you first purchase and download the content. Um, if you are if you are trying to decide whether or not you want to purchase or not not purchase if if you're trying if you want to download my physics mod and sound mod, run the equipment first um, without the physics or sound mod. See how it performs. See what it sounds like. And then decide for yourself whether or not you want to download my physics mod and sound mod. Uh, the link for that will be included in the description. So, so keep an eye out for that. Notice too that uh, the curves are very nicely super elevated.
Yeah, I don't know why there isn't a signal restriction there. There should be a signal restriction. I should be getting a an approach limited there. Whatever. So yeah, coming up on Secaucus Junction. We're about two and a half, three minutes late. That's not a problem. Plenty of schedule padding as usual. Um, they completely redesigned the station, so it should look very nice. You'll see in about 20 seconds. Alright, so one thing I want to show you guys, uh, it's pretty, I think it's pretty neat, is that you can toggle the ditch lights on the ALP45DP on and off. Uh, the shortcut key on the keyboard, the short key is, is J, so I hit J, turns off, hit J, turns on. Uh, they're off by default, um, usually just turn them on when you're going through a crossing or if you're coming into a station and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, this is the caucus junction. Let's take a quick look. They're, they're missing a couple of things, but otherwise, it looks pretty realistic. They got the fence, they've got the stairwells. Oh, they're missing the departure vision screens. Whatever. Um, they've got the coastline schedule. It's, it's pretty grainy, but eh, it's cute. I want to show you some of the door sound, the door sound mod I made to this as well. So the doors again. Alright, so your doors don't sound like that uh, straight out of the box either. That's part of the sound mod. Um, in addition, oh, I, what I like that they did about this too is that they added a reverb effect that you get inside the uh, tunnels so that the, the sounds, all the sounds that come from the train, reverb. It sounds pretty cool, actually. Next stop is Newark, Penn Station, Newark, Newark 457. Coming up on Portal Bridge, which has been completely redesigned again. I think it looks pretty neat. Speed limits have also been updated uh, on the Northeast Corridor, so they are actually more accurate now. Um, they were able to go through some documentation that's available online, and 
teleport the speed limits over. So that should be a, a, a plus. Like I said before, the dynamic brake, from the locomotive at least, can be uh, actuated separately with the combined uh, brake throttle and brake controller, but you can also override with the automatic brake handle which will blend the brake based on the PSI reduction in the brake pipe as I demonstrated before. The the way that works is that whichever controller is sending the higher brake command, that controller will take priority. So if I only have a five pound reduction in the brake pipe, and I'm, it, that's only calling for about a, I think that's like a 30%, 25-30% uh, dynamic brake. I don't know, I'm just pulling that number out of my head. Uh, so five pound reduction, in the brake pipe, 25 to 30 percent dynamic brake uh, request. If I move the combined controller to maximum dynamic brake, the game engine will will adhere to that maximum dynamic brake request from the combined controller, and vice versa. If I only have the com combined controller in, let's say, brake notch one, and I make a full reduction on the brake pipe that calls for 100 percent dynamic brake, the once again, the game engine will adhere to that 100% dynamic brake request from the automatic brake handle. It's a pretty neat scripting feature, uh, feature that they managed to uh, work in. I just want to I just want to make a note that that is not present. That feature is not present on the cab car. Um, some of you might know that the dynamic brake range of the combined controller from the cab cars and usually transit that range is not active it does not work so you cannot call for an independent application of dynamic brake from the cab car uh, it's 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 some it's a technical thing um, where there isn't actually a, a connection made between the cab car and the locomotive in terms of the dynamic brake line control so the only way to brake from the cab car is there's our ACSCS um, is to call for a, a automatic brake handle reduction alright this curve has been wonderfully super elevated on the on tracks 2 and 3 uh, track 1 lacks super elevation for a technical reason but otherwise, ooh, it's a very nice super elevation right there. Penn Station has also been, uh, I think it's been redesigned. It looks different.
reverb is awesome. Okay, so Newark Penn Station. I mean, I'm sort of disappointed they didn't actually put that messed up fence over here to prevent people from going past this section. I know this section of the platforms are closed and whatnot, but uh, eh, it's not a big deal. They have the path tracks set up. They have the path track up here set up. That's nice. It'd be it'd be sort of interesting if they were to actually create path for uh, train simulator. But um, you know. That's just musing on my part. I lied, uh, the wheel slip thing is over here. I don't know why I was pointing here earlier. Wheel slip is here, and then the sander is here, and whatnot, blah blah blah. So, these two lights are related. You might also notice that I'm in uh, <clears throat> I'm in free roam right now. I'm not in quick drive actually because a free roam allows me to actually change the tracks I can use uh, to get to my destination, and b I've been ex I personally I have personally been experiencing some issues with the quick drive uh, functionality where some destinations can't be selected if you start from other destinations or if I can select destinations I try to load the game crashes on me blah 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 so I don't know if that's a if that's a community wide issue right now or if it's just something I'm experiencing on my end so uh, just be mindful of that in case that does come up the, the career scenarios um, should work fine those have been probably been tested extensively so I, I know that quick drive is, is always uh, a part of the, the system that's sort of overlooked at times it's not given as much attention as the career scenarios are so just just be mindful of that all right so our next stop is Woodbridge our next stop is Woodbridge at 516 we may leave early if we arrive early the airport station's been completely redesigned as well it looks really nice uh, they got the staircases at the end of the platforms they've got the monorail rendered on the left hand side actually it looks really nice All the speed limits around the uh, Elmora curve are are updated as well, so you're not going to hit that 55 until after you pass Elizabeth. It's really nice. I don't have to start braking as early. I mean, I, I pretty much ignore the speed limits in the original Northeast Corridor anyway whenever I'm operating because they're not accurate.
stop to fix that horn volume issue. I've been experiencing an issue with my copy of the sound mod. I'll fix that before I release it. Should be the horn should be a lot louder than that. Sounds fine from in the cab, obviously, but... Elizabeth's been updated. They have that little end platform thing now. It's pretty neat. They're still missing the proper parking deck uh, building, though. So if you're on the express track, the track to my left, um, pointed out, if you are on this track, between here and Rahway, you will have a 125 mile an hour uh, limit, so you can actually bring your train pretty close to that speed if, if, you, uh, if you're running Amtrak equipment. Um, so they did fix that speed limit, which is nice. Linden's been updated. Looks beautiful. Rahway, uh... Huh. I'm trying to remember if they did update Rahway or not. It, I, it, I'm sure it does look different. But, um... I'm actually... I was actually sort of disappointed they didn't, um... Render the route as far down as Metro Park. Then I could actually have an excuse to run Amtrak trains between Metro Park and New York Penn. But, eh, whatever. It's not called the NJCL for no reason. I don't like it. Put me on the ground. Uh, I hate this camera thing sometimes. Oh, there we go. There's Linden. Platforms are updated. Oh, it looks really nice, doesn't it? Oh, restriction. Speed restriction. Service.
So, yeah, the screen is supposed to be... That's your information display screen. Um, it's a shame that it's off at the moment, but I'm working on seeing if I can get an image and uh, of that screen that's detailed enough to send over to the developers at DTG to see if they can, uh, if there's a patch release for this content, to see if they can turn that screen on and get it to function properly. So, hopefully I can get that information to send over. Is this a 30 mile an hour? Yes it is. We are going to diverge from the Northeast Corridor now and onto the coastline. Everything from here on out is new territory and has never been before seen by public eyes. Or at least by anyone who hasn't purchased this yet. early into Woodbridge. We're going to be really early into Woodbridge. Woodbridge scheduled departure is 516, but again, we can leave early if we do arrive early. Not so for Perth Amboy. So one thing I want to note about the grade crossings uh, on this route is that they're not marked. You do not have a whistle sign letting you know that a grade crossing is coming up, blah blah blah, all that stuff. Uh, you have to actually keep an eye out and watch for the grade crossings, otherwise you will miss them. You will very easily miss the grade crossings, especially south of Long Branch. There are a lot of great crossings. start breaking at the 
next signal. We should be able to make the stop. Uh, the brakes are very good. The brakes are very good on this equipment. A 16 pound reduction. platform yes very nice so we're permitted to leave up to five minutes early from every station here on out except for Perth Amboy which is the next stop next stop Perth Amboy scheduled departure time is 522 Me sitting at Perth Amboy for a while.
key to making a good stop here is that uh, if you're traveling near MAS, make a full service as soon as you hit this, this bridge here, the, the second bridge out. Make a full service to 84 PSI. And then bail off as necessary. That wasn't too bad. Yeah, that that that's an issue that I don't like about the doors. Uh, I I mean it's hard to to manage because you have low level and high level platforms, but I don't know. I feel like there should be a way to make that work. I gotta wait here till 22 anyway. So uh, doors. Yep, guess people will be drunk, jumping down off the traps today. <laughs> Not to mention, I, I think you noticed, but the center doors don't open. The center doors don't open even when the train is on uh, on a high-level platform. Uh, but, you know, it, it's part of the door code in the game engine, so uh, there's not much they can really do about it. I just feel like there should be more effort placed into some... Uh, some scripting to uh, accommodate this door issue. They did a really nice job with the uh, surrounding scenery though, I have to give them credit for that. Oop, almost got hit by a car. I'm trespassing. Trespassing, trespassing, ooh, fall to my death. Alright, there we go. Just look at the detail that went into this. It looks really nice. They got the grades correct. The trucks are, are they look beautiful. The traction pins are rendered. All the details. On the locomotive looks good. They fixed the striping. The striping is fixed, I, I think. Yes, the striping is fixed on the locomotive. Um, once we switch to diesel mode, you will see that the exhaust plumes originate in the proper locations. Um, I've tested diesel mode out already. Uh, personally, it the sounds are not completely accurate, but it sounds it sounds pretty decent. It sounds pretty decent. You'll you'll find out once we hit Long Branch, but I think it sounds pretty decent. What I do like about the way they coded the horn is that let's do this. Uh, you'll know that the horn on the 45 DP is it, it's just shrouding behind it, so you can't really hear it as well when you're behind a locomotive. So we'll see that. But there's a distance issue here as well. I want to see if I can mitigate that distancing issue with my mod. Yeah, I know. I know it's not the most ideal sound, but look. If someone can better get a better recording of that horn, then be my guest. Get a great recording and make your own sound mod or send it to me so I can update my own sound mod. Uh, you know, it's a lot of things that go into to recording sounds and cutting them ju up just right so that they play properly within the simulator. And uh, let me tell you, New Jersey Transit with their all their restricted horn valves and whatnot, it, it's very hard to record a good sound recording of the horn on any of the equipment. 
from New Jersey Transit. So, like I said, you can get better recording, by all means do so. All right, next stop, South Amboy, 527. We are permitted to depart early. We'll be crossing the Raritan River in a, in a few minutes. I think they did a pretty good job with that bridge, too. Looks very, it's very detailed. Looks nice. Apparently that's still an issue. It's cute. Oh, I don't think it's a big deal. Normally people wouldn't see that anyway. Alright, so this is where the grade crossing action begins, so you gotta keep an eye out for those gates, so you know when to blow the horn sequence. Yeah, I'm not sure why that reads Trenton. Um, I think there's a there's a way you can change the destination things that are outside of the actual in-game experience. It has something to do with the coding, but I'm, I'm not positive myself. I'm pretty sure that'll be in the manual. I haven't read the manual yet, so I don't know.
next stop. Next stop is Aberdeen Matawan at 536. 5.36. Once again, from this point forward, you can depart all stations early if we arrive early. Exactly what I was talking about, this great crossing sneak up on you. Chances are I might have already missed one.
Okay, next stop, Hazlitt. Next stop, Hazlitt. It's a little tricky to spot because the platform is a little shorter, so you don't have as much room to break with. I usually start breaking once I hit the 80 mile an hour marker. Like right about now. Make a 16 pound reduction. Alright, look at that stop. How beautiful that is. Alright, let's go. about two minutes early. Next stop is Middletown. Next stop is Middletown. Scheduled 447. We will probably depart about three minutes early. Middletown is next.
Not too bad. Alright, Highball Middletown, next stop, Red Bank, followed by Little Silver and Long Branch. Red Bank in about five minutes. So I'm going to let you listen to the difference when the windows are open. It is noticeably louder. I like the effect that they managed to give me a code in here. It's pretty neat. Is that crossfit?
Alright, high bar red bank. Next stop, little silver. Eyeball, little silver. Next stop, Long Branch. Next stop, Long Branch. Shut the windows now. Our scheduled departure time from Long Branch is 6.03 p.m. Six oh three p.m. is our scheduled departure time 
from Long Branch. So that gives us plenty of time to do the mode change. Um, the mode change from electric to diesel is, is pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll show you once we get there, but it does take about two minutes to fully change over to diesel mode. Um, so, so we'll have a little time to do that once we get to Long Branch. Long Branch. If this is your stop, please gather all personal belongings before you exit the train. Check your surroundings to make sure you don't leave anything behind. Thank you for riding with New Jersey Transit.
right. Okay, so we have a little bit of downtime. I'm gonna use the restroom really quick and then come back and do the mode change. So I'm gonna end the recording here. You'll see the clock jump maybe two or three minutes and I'll come back to the mode change and we'll depart for Bayhead. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, okay, so we're gonna do the mode change now. So we'll be ready to depart right at 6.03, which is our scheduled departure time. So in order to initiate the mode change, there are two ways you can do it. You can do it via the keyboard. I believe the shortcut is P, or you could do it from the cab. Um, you see this button here in the in the locomotive. It's labeled alert or acknowledge penalty reset, um, fault reset. In the cab car, it is labeled fault reset. Hit the button once, and that will initiate the mode change to diesel. Alright, should not be that fast. Um, that should not have completed so quickly. Huh, it's odd. There should have been like a couple minutes of delay for that. I'm gonna test this out really quick. So we're gonna change we're going to go back to uh, electric mode for a second here. Uh. I'm going to hit the P button. Alright, so we switch back to electric. That's odd. This should not be occurring so quickly. There should be about a minute and a half to two minute delay on the mode change. Let me test this again. I'm going to hit the use the short key this time. Alright, so that lowers and raises the panogram. And if I hit the fault reset, this should not go over so quickly. Alright, there's a problem that I need to report. Okay, anyways, uh, if this was functioning properly, you should actually have a delay in the mode change. You should see this uh, number here, the RPM increased from 0 to 600, slowly, um, whatever, so I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get that looked into. Alright, so let's pretend that two minutes has passed, mode change is complete, um, let the passengers on one last time before we depart. Doors are closed. Ready to depart. Pull the schedule back up really quick. Just a reminder, this is NJ Rail 3361, 3361 to Bayhead, departing Long Branch at 603. 
Next stop, Elberon. Next stop, Elberon. Approximately three minutes. One thing I do want to point out uh, that is still functional is <clears throat> is that when you make the mode change over into diesel, there is a part of the engine script that actually does uh, reduce the power that is applied to the wheels. You will notice that the amp readings are not the same at the higher speeds, which is normal. Um, so, as long as you can, if you're looking at the amp rating when you're in uh, full power at 60 miles an hour in electric mode and the amp rating when you're at full power in diesel mode, there should be a noticeable difference. It should be much lower in diesel mode. Uh, dynamic braking is the same, unfortunately, even though it should be lower as well. So, <clears throat> before, you might have noticed that the, the amp ratings uh, during acceleration began to fall off sharply around 38 miles an hour. They should begin to fall off a lot earlier now. So we'll, we'll check to see how early they start to fall off. start to fall off right now. So right as it hits 25 miles an hour, it starts to fall off. So uh, that's good. That's good. That means that there is a noticeable reduction in the amount of power supplied to the traction motors when in diesel mode. Next stop, Allenhurst, 612 at 612.
remember what I said about the grade crossings? There's no prior warning except your eyes. So you gotta keep an eye on the roadbed. Keep an eye on the right of way. Make sure you don't miss any grade crossings. Just to give you a sample of the exterior diesel sounds, I'll leave it in the exterior view for this acceleration sequence.
good spot. Good spot. Stop Belmar at six twenty three. Belmar six twenty three.
Next stop, Spring Lake, followed by Manassaquan, Point Pleasant Beach, and then finally Bayhead. sure the route ahead is clear. Yes, it is. Okay. Not sure why we're getting the signal restriction. Should probably clear it by the next signal. She clear up. Stop, Manasaquan. 631, 631, next stop.
Next stop, Point Pleasant Bay, followed by Bayhead. Track speed is 40, but I am being restricted to 30 because I'm wrong railing from this point on into Bayhead.
Next and final stop, Bayhead. Please walk to the rear of the train to exit. Make sure you gather all of your personal belongings, check your surroundings to make sure you don't leave anything behind. Thank you for riding with New Jersey Transit. We hope to see you again soon. Next and final stop, Bayhead. Next and final. Bayhead, Bayhead, rear of the train to exit, rear of the train to exit, last two cars only, last two cars only. Oh, that's the entire line in the uh, southbound direction. It's the entire line, so um, yeah. I'm gonna check out the cab car and come back with the cab car video probably later today. Uh, stay tuned. Lay this train up in the yard and we'll be good to go.
That's it. Alright, that's all for now. Keep an eye out for the cab car video. Uh, probably gonna make a run. I don't know if I want to start all the way from Bayhead. I might start at uh, one of the shorter local runs. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Until next time, see ya.